Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. G'day, I'm Troy Dean and welcome to Rinse and Repeat. You're watching Business Blueprint. In this series, we're going to teach you how to create recurring revenue in your business. Why? Because recurring revenue really is the holy grail of all business models. Recurring revenue gives you predictable cash flow. It allows you to manage the growth of your business and allows you to predict when you can hire staff and when you can expand business operations. And it dramatically decreases the stress levels. When I was running a client services agency three years ago in Melbourne, I would wake up at the start of every month and have to go and find tens of thousands of dollars every month just to keep the lights on and pay the staff and pay the rent. Well, over the last three years, I've transitioned to a 100% recurring revenue business model, and it has made life so much easier. So my, my aim and my mission for you guys in this series is to get you out of that trading your time for money treadmill and move you into a recurring revenue business model. This is episode one, and in this episode, you're going to learn how to find the people that will give you recurring revenue. So here's what we're going to cover in this episode. You're going to learn how to find your perfect customer for your recurring revenue product. You're going to learn the powerful story of a local company that's finding more success in their business by learning to say no to customers who aren't right for them. You're going to learn the subtle but important difference between clients and customers. And you're going to learn why customers are preferable over clients for recurring revenue. We're also going to talk about how to identify the people who are likely to buy from you on a recurring basis. And if you're currently in business, chances are you've already got these customers sitting in your database. Then we're going to talk about how to identify what these typical customers have in common. Uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to uncover the method for working out why these customers continue to buy from you. And we're going to look at the traits of recurring customers and work out why these insights matter and how we can use them to transition our customers to a recurring revenue business model. And finally, we're going to tell you why you need to create a customer avatar card and show you exactly how to make one. You ready? Let's get started. Okay. Here's, here's the, the truth of the matter. You can't make everyone happy. And I just want, this is a bit of a mindset shift just to set the scene for this entire series. I don't want you to think that you have to make everyone happy in your business all the time. In fact, if you try to make everyone happy, you'll end up just diluting your message and painting in such broad brushstrokes that you'll end up appealing to no one. So the old adage is, if you try and make everyone happy all of the time, you'll make no one happy any of the time. And that's true. So I, I want you to think about your business and your product and your marketing and, and the kind of business that you want to build over the next 12 months or the kind of shift that you want to take in your business if, if you've got an established business and just do it for, for you and for your purposes and for the customers that are right because not everyone will be right for this new business model, or this new way of doing business. So now I want to shift and, and get you thinking about the difference between customers and clients. If you're in a service-based business, then uh, typically speaking, you'll be selling time for money. You'll be doing client services. And the difference between a customer and a client is a customer typically buys a product. So a product is something that you can make once and you can duplicate and sell lots of times. Think about software that you might buy from Officeworks or think about a book that you buy from the bookstore or a mouse that you might buy for the computer. That's a product that is designed and manufactured once and then duplicated and sold many times. And customers typically buy product, whereas clients typically buy services. And a service is something that is customized and is a bespoke offering for that client to solve that particular client's needs. There's much greater overhead and much more face time in dealing with clients, and that's why I believe that selling a product to, to customers is ultimately more profitable in the long run. Customers, as I said, are preferable for a recurring revenue business model. So this is, again, just a, a bit of a, a shift in thinking. Start thinking about selling a product to your customers versus selling a service to your clients. So we all need customers. Here's a, a very simple uh, formula for business. I'll take you to my little blackboard right now and just map this, this very simple three-part formula out. A business generates revenue by delivering value to its customers. 
Yeah, I'll just say that again. A business generates revenue by delivering value to its customers. That's why customers will pay you revenue, because of the value that you're delivering to them. Now, if you're doing this well, your, uh, your, the value will be perceived by your customer as greater than the revenue that they're giving you. So if you're doing business well and you're doing your marketing well, your customers will perceive that the value they're receiving from you is greater than the revenue they're giving you. If they perceive the revenue they're giving you as being greater than what they're receiving, then they'll see that as an expense or a cost. But if they see the value they're receiving as greater than the money they're giving you, they see it as an investment. So your job is to make sure your customers perceive the value as being greater than the revenue they're giving you. And if you're doing business really well, you'll be able to optimize your processes internally so that you can deliver that value and extract a profit from the revenue on the way in. And we're going to talk more about that throughout the course uh, of this series, how to optimize the delivery of your product to your customers so that you can generate that revenue and make a profit in the long run, which is, after all, why we're all here. So customers, if, if we can set that aside and agree that, biz, that all businesses selling product need customers, customers all need the same thing. Uh, a, a man by the name of Abraham Maslow developed uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And Abraham Maslow is a very famous psychologist in the 1900s in America. And he developed what has famously become known as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he studied human behavior and he designed the, the five major areas that drive human behavior. What is it that motivates human beings to behave in a certain way? And he broke those needs down into five key areas. The first is physiological. So physiological needs are literally the things that we need to survive, food, water, and sleep. Once you've got that taken care of, our next bucket of needs, if you like, is about our personal safety. So our shelter and our personal health. Once you've got that taken care of, our next, uh, our next group of needs is a sense of love and belonging. And I know that might sound a little woo-woo and a little kind of airy-fairy, but I strongly believe that, that this is where you can create something that your competitors can't compete with. Once, once you've got love and belonging taken care of, which is really a sense of belonging to your tribe and a sense of connectedness, the next uh, group of needs in Maslow's hierarchy of needs are self-esteem and then self-actualization. But this sense of love and belonging is what I want you to keep in mind when you're thinking about designing your recurring revenue product. Your community is your secret source. If you ask any uh, Apple fanboy or fangirl, for example, why they use Apple products, it's because using an Apple product they feel like they belong to this tribe of people that use these really beautifully designed great products with a great user experience. If you ask any fan of a sporting club why they follow their sporting club or what they love about it the most, it's that sense of belonging to that tribe and wearing those colours. And this is something that I believe if you can build community around your product, this is something that your competitors cannot come along and duplicate quickly. I once had a conversation with an investor who said to me, you know, if this product of idea of yours is so good, what's, why aren't Google just going to come along and throw more resources and more developers at it and just take you over? And he made a very good point. And what I've learned over the last few years is that if you build a community around your product, that's something that competitors can't come in and duplicate quickly. So I just urge you to think about how you can be building community around your product. So, just setting some, some context here for the rest of this series. Focus on the customers who are ultimately going to be right, that is, a good fit for your community, and don't worry about anyone else. Don't worry about people who criticize your product or people who aren't right for your community. Just focus all of your efforts on attracting the right people and the right customers that are going to help you build a long-term community. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Gary Tramer, who runs a business in Melbourne called LeadChat. Uh, he's the CEO and co-founder of LeadChat. LeadChat is an organization, a, a service that puts human beings on your live chat widgets on your website to monitor those chat widgets and convert your website visitors into leads. And Gary and his co-founders have been through a, a soul-searching journey over the last 12 months to find out the customers that are right for their service, and they've continued to iterate their products so that it matches the, the right kind of customers. And they're getting a lot better at saying no to customers who are not a good fit. So right now, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Gary Tramer. That spend a lot of money driving traffic to their site and face this issue where the visitors that come just don't convert. Uh, and instead of spending money on 
the whiz bang A B testing and all these other things. <coughs> excuse me, all these other things. Uh, we have humans sit via a, a sales live chat portal and convert those visitors into leads. Nice. I, I, I like in. I mean, you know, call it an elevator pitch, call it a unique value proposition, whatever. It's this this idea that we kind of need a couple of sentences to explain to people what we do. And what I like, this is different from what how I knew that you used to explain lead chat even like a month ago. What I like is that you've actually led with the kind of the situation and the problem with the current situation. So you're currently paying money to get traffic to your website and it's not converting. So that's the status quo and there's a problem with that status Correct. quo. You don't lead with the solution. You don't lead with, well, we put human beings on chat widgets on your websites. We used to. Yeah, you used to. Yeah. So well, that's obviously been a conscious... We're completely off script now, which is fine. I love it. But that's been the conscious evolution of your, of your unique value proposition. It has. We're, we're learning more about our customers because of the churn of yeah. customers uh -huh. and peeling those layers away. Yeah. Um, we're identifying what why people are actually coming to us in the first place. Yeah. And out of all the other things that we thought they might be wanting our service for, uh, it is fundamentally to solve that problem. Mm. Lead chat is a recurring revenue business model. Of course, is. this is a show about building recurring revenue. You haven't always been in the recurring revenue space. How is a recurring revenue business model different to some of your past ventures? To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.